Hello everyone, welcome back to Math Mood. Today we have an interesting equation, exponential equation. We have 4 to the power x minus 3 to the power x equal to 7. And we need to find our x. So I want to suggest you my approach, how I, how I, thought, how I solved this equation. So take a look. First of all, we can multiply or divide both sides by, for example, in our case, let's divide both sides by 4 to the power x. So let's divide both sides by 4 to the power x. As a result, we'll have dividing both of these elements by 4 to the power x. We will have 4 to the power x from here and dividing by 4 to the power x that we need to divide from here. So minus 3 to the power x dividing by 4 to the power x and equal to 7 dividing by 4 to the power x. Nothing hard, just divide both sides by 4 to the power x. If you simplify this, you will have the same as right here. So let's go next. What we'll have next? Take a look, right here we're dividing same elements, 4 to the power x dividing by 4 to the power x. As a result, we'll have on the other one, we can cancel these elements, we'll have one. What we're going to do next, right here, take a look, we have the same base with different bases, but same exponent. As a result, if we have a to the power x dividing by b to the power x, we can write it in one parenthesis, a over b to the power x. So this is the rule that we need, so let's use this rule right here. We will have 3 over 4 all raised to the power x. 3 over 4 raised to the power x. And we cannot do the same logic right here because we have a constant in our denominator dividing by exponential function 4 to the power x. So this is our equation after this simplifying step. What are we going to do next? Take a look. I want to show you real quick about exponential function, about function y equal to b to the power x. So this is our exponential function. And if we have, we will have two cases. The first case is when b is between one, 0 and 1. What we will have as a result? We will have that our function will be an increasing function, decreasing function, decreasing function. And if we have the second case, if we have b is greater than 1, we will have that our function will be increasing function this function will be increasing function. So this one decreasing, this one increasing. If between 0 and 1, we will have decreasing function and right here increasing function. So let's use this logic right here. Take a look what we will have. Right here we have a constant. So as a result, let's, use, let's put this constant on the left and let's bring this minus 3, 4 to the power x on the right. As a result, we will have 7 over 4 to the power x and plus 3 over 4 to the power x. So I bring this minus 3 fourths to the power x on the right. So take a look what we will have. Right here we will have constant on the left side and on the right side take a look. This one function we have 7 dividing by 4 to the power x. 7 is a constant and we divide in this constant by 4 to the power x. 4 to the power x right here is increasing function. So if we divide in a constant by an increasing function, we will have a decreasing function. So this function will be decreasing function. And right here we have 3 4 fourths to the power x. This 3 fourths is this case because 3 fourths is less than 1. So as a result, we will have that this function will be increasing function, decreasing function as well. So as a result, we'll have a constant equal to the sum of two decreasing function. So the sum of two de decreasing function will be a decreasing function. So as a result, we'll have that constant equal to this function I write as a decreasing function. So if we draw a graph, what we'll have? We will have that a constant, our constant, is equal to a decreasing function. So this is approximately graph, so decreasing function. So take a look. One and only case that this this equation works is when these two axes intersect in one point. Because if we have a decreasing function and a constant, one and only way that this function function intersect is when intersect at all in one point. So as a result, we'll have only our root. So if we go to our equation, it's not hard to see that by by inspection we will have our root that x equal to 2. This is by inspection. So as a result we'll have x equal to 2. 
Of course, this is not like a general method. This is by ins inspection. If we have, for example, this iterate here, this method is not works, but this method show why why we have only one one root only our x equal to two. This is not our of course a general method, but this is a project that I use sometimes. So I want to show you this approach how to show that we will have only one root and we will have x equal to 2, we will have 16 minus 9, it will be equal to 2, 7. So if you still have any question, write a question in the comment, write your suggestion in the comment. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next videos.